Good morning, everyone. Let's get started. Uh, all right. So uh, we've been discussing the, the the discrete memoryless broadcast channel in the last class, uh, and in particular, we were focusing on the two-user broadcast channel. So you have one sender and two receivers, and the goal is to design encoding and decoding schemes so that you can operate at the best possible rates, at the same time achieve vanishingly small probability of error. As I had mentioned in the very beginning, we are only going to focus on the uh, on the private message capacity region of the broadcast channels, wherein uh, the two users, the two receivers, uh, want to get two independent messages, and there is no common message uh, intended for both. Okay, so you, so the transmitter has two different messages: one of maybe k bits, one the other maybe, sorry, the other one of l one bits and the other consisting of L2 bits. So the first message is intended for user 1. The second message is intended for user 2. And these two messages are independent of each other. Uh, one can also study the case uh, where you have also, well, where in addition to these private messages, you also have a common message, uh, maybe which, have, which consists of L0 bits, uh, which, which both user 1 and user 2 want to decode. Uh, but but we'll see uh, we'll see that the approach that that we develop over here can also be extended to the common messages case. Uh, in fact, superposition coding will will help you uh, achieve something over there. But but for now, let's just consider uh, the private message capacity region. We we first saw some very simple inner and outer bounds. The inner bound being the TDMA inner bound, which is the line joining C1 and C2. Uh, that is the capacity. C1 is the capacity where when only user 1 transmits, and C2 is the capacity when only user 2 transmits. And, and uh, we also saw some outer bounds. Uh, in particular, anything outside this pentagonal region is not achievable. And, and we already know from TDMA that uh, any region within this triangle is achievable. So, uh, so now we'll, we'll see some general approaches to deriving inner bounds. Uh, in fact, uh, the inner bound will be derived using superposition codes. And we'll see that superposition codes give us some inner bound. And for a certain class of channels, this inner bound is tight. Okay, in particular, for channels where uh, one one user sees a more powerful channel than the other user. Uh, the uh, the superposition uh, code inner bound achieves the entire capacity region. But for more general broadcast channels, uh, superposition codes do not achieve the entire capacity region. Uh, th these are suboptimal. Okay, and in particular, we'll also see that if you, if you extend, try to extend this to more number of users, uh, the same bounds are not tight any longer. Okay, so so what is so what's the approach using superposition codes? The idea is the following. Uh, now, if we consider as an example the binary symmetric broadcast channel, where you have transmitter who sends x of i in each channel use i. And receiver 1 sees y1 of i, receiver 2 sees y2 of i. And y1 of i is obtained by passing x of i through a BSC with parameter p1. And y2 of i is obtained by passing x of i through an independent BSC uh, with crossover probability p2. And we'll assume that uh, p2 is strictly larger than p1. So user 2 sees is actually degraded with respect to user 1. Okay, so 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 throughout without loss of generality, we'll assume that user two sees a worse channel than user one. So the capacity of so that in, in particular it implies that the capacity to user two is is less than the capacity to user one. Okay, so the question is now uh, in in such a scenario, can we do better than TDMA? And and in fact we can, and that is achieved by the following superposition coding scheme. So for the binary symmetric broadcast channel, you first consider a code book, uh, which consists of what, what I call the green points. Uh, now these code words are, are sort of chosen independently and uniformly at random from the Hamming space. All these 
green points and uh, and corresponding to each green point which which i call a cloud center i'll construct a number of satellite code words in particular there are two to the nr2 cloud centers and two to the and for each cloud center there are two to the nr1 uh, satellite code words so these blue points over here which form a cluster around the cloud center and in particular the the satellite code words corresponding to each cloud center uh, will be chosen according to a certain parameter so so we'll define a parameter alpha and and we'll assume that the satellite code words are roughly at a distance at a hamming distance of n alpha from the cloud center okay and and so so we choose two to the nr1 satellite code words for each cloud center and that constitutes our entire code book the set of all satellite code words that is the set of all blue points this constitutes the entire code book uh, which which xn comes from so whenever the transmitter wants to send a particular pair of messages m1 and m2 it does the following so each m2 so note that m1 consists of nr nr1 bits and m2 consists of nr2 bits so each message m2 intended for user 2 is identified with one of these cloud centers so corresponding to m2 you find which uh, you find which cloud center the the particular realization of m2 corresponds to maybe it is this particular cloud center and m1 identifies the satellite code word from this cloud all right so so corresponding to m2 there is one so corresponding to m1 there is one satellite code word maybe it is this particular satellite code word this satellite code word maybe and this is transmitted by uh, sorry maybe not this yeah, whatever this satellite code word perhaps so i think this is the cloud center and and this is the satellite code word corresponding to uh, corresponding to the message m1 so this so m1 comma m2 uniquely identifies one of these code words one of the satellite code words from the entire code book but let's, let's say that let's assume that this is the satellite uh, code word which is actually transmitted so xn is equal to this now this is corrupted independently by the first channel and the second channel so user 1 sees some corrupted version maybe this is the point and user 2 sees an independently corrupted version maybe this is the received vector by user 2 and each of them can do maybe uh, typical set decoding or uh, even minimum distance decoding so user one decodes does minimum distance decoding to the closest satellite code word whereas user two does minimum distance decoding not to a satellite code word but to a cloud center so so it tries to find the closest cloud center to its received code its received vector and user one does minimum distance decoding to the corresponding satellite code word so user two can can decode to a cloud center, and user one can decode to a satellite code word. So so in some sense, user one is decoding not just M one but also M two, whereas user two is only is only able to decode M two, and that is all that user two needs. Right. So so this is the this is the decoding rule, and 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 decoding succeeds if if user 1 can decode m1 correctly in fact uh, it decodes if user 1 can decode both m1 and m2 correctly and user 2 can decode m2 correctly okay and uh, it's it's not too hard to show that that this is indeed possible if r1 is less than the binary entropy of h of alpha star p1 minus h of p1 and R2 is less than 1 minus the binary entropy of alpha star P2, where alpha star P2 is defined as alpha times 1 minus P2 plus 1 minus alpha times P2, and alpha star P1 is alpha into 1 minus P1 plus 1 minus alpha times P1. 
okay and and so so this is uh, how it works and and this gives us some achievable region so the superposition code uh, lets us achieve this particular region in fact this turns out to be the best so uh, in 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 the next class or so we'll show that any rate which does not or any rate pair which does not lie in this region is not achievable okay so so before we do that we will we'll sketch what this rate region looks like and i'll also derive the superposition code in a bound for general channels right so but but uh, up till this point are there any questions Any questions so far? Okay, so so let's let's look at some parameters and try to sketch the rate region for some numbers, and and let's see that this is in fact indeed better than TDMA, right? So so we got some expressions, but but just by looking at the expressions, it is not clear whether this beats TDMA or not. So, so let's try to do that. So I'll stop presenting this and let's go to a Jupyter notebook. Okay, so, so let's maybe write down the expressions for the H superposition coding in a bound. In a bound that is uh, R1 is less than uh, so, uh, so, so note that user one sees a better channel than user two, all right? So R1 is less than H of alpha star P1 minus H of P1, H2 of um, alpha star P1 minus H2 of P1. Note that for every alpha, you get one particular rate region. So you need to vary. Uh, so yeah, so for every alpha, you get one one rate pair, one particular value of the RHS. And by varying alpha, you'll get the entire rate region. Right? And R2 is less than uh, 1 minus H2 of alpha star P2. So, so the second user can only decode to the cloud center. Uh, so, so the interpretation for this expression is that user two sees sees a BSC, uh, which uh, which consists of, of course, which, which which consists of corruption by the channel. So that is P two, and also uh, what is actually transmitted is not the cloud center, but a satellite code word. And the satellite code word and for a given cloud center, the satellite code word does not contain any information about M two. So user two treats that portion as, as part of the noise. All right, so, so that is the rate achievable by user R2. So it's one minus the capacity of, so basically this is the capacity of the BSC uh, with channel transition probability, with the transition probability uh, alpha star P2. Okay, whereas this is the capacity of a channel uh, with, uh, with 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 uh, capacity of a BSC with transition probability P1 and or or crossover probability P1 and with an input constraint of alpha star P1. I right, sorry uh, input constraint of alpha. So this is the capacity. This you can show that this is indeed the capacity of that particular BSC. Okay, so this is the superposition coding in a bound. So we'll plot this out. But we also want to compare this with TDMA. TDMA. And, and the TDMA bound is, is basically the following. So R, R1 is, should, can be less than, uh, so, so note that there are two capacities, one minus H of P1 and one minus H of P2. So let's say, beta times 1 minus H2 of P1. So this is the capacity for 
user one when user two doesn't get anything. Only user one gets everything. And when R when when only user two is active. One minus it's two of okay. so so for beta fraction of the time user one is active and for one minus b and the remaining one minus beta fraction of the time user two is active so when user one is active it it operates at the maximum rate possible that is one minus h of p one and when user two is active it is it operates at the maximum possible rate of one minus h of p two. Okay, so this is the rate. This is the set of all rate pairs achievable using TDMA, and this is the set of all rate pairs achieved achievable using the superposition coding in a bar. Okay, so so let's let's write some helper functions. Uh, Since many of these involve binary entropy functions, let me just define the following function: minus p into log p minus one minus p times one minus p. So this is the binary entropy function. And now let's try. Let's evaluate these two rates. Let me call this R one S, R two S, R one T, and R two P. Okay. First, uh, let's fix some parameters P one and P two. So P one should be less than P two. Let me choose P one to be something small, three point zero five, and P two to be something a little large, uh, maybe point three. And now I have to vary alpha. All right, I have to vary alpha between uh, maybe zero and half. So I will vary alpha uh, one zero zero one to one four nine nine. Okay, and 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 this will give me sort of the entire rate region. Right, and I also need a beta. Can go from zero to one. Okay, so, so TDMA gives me the following rates. So R one T is equal to beta into one minus P of P one R two T equal to one minus beta into one minus P of Two and superposition coding gives me these. We use this. So R one S is basically equal to this. I need alpha star p one and alpha star p two. Alpha into one minus p one plus one minus alpha into p one. Alpha star p two is alpha into one minus p two plus. One minus alpha times p two. So this is the composition of a BSC alpha with a with a BSC p one, whereas this is the composition of a BSC alpha with BSC p two. Right. So this is 
star p2 whereas this is alpha star p1 of p1 of alpha star p2 okay so now i have these and all i have to do is plot both of these Let's plot R one P versus R two P. So the red curve will denote TDMA, whereas R one S. So maybe the blue curve will denote uh, superposition coding. So this is what what this will look like, right? So the red curve is TDMA, so this is a straight line joining these two points, uh, whereas the blue curve is the superposition code inner bound. So so we can clearly see that the superposition code achieves better rates, right? It includes everything within the TDMA, which is this triangular region over here, uh, but but something more, right? We can play around with some of the parameters. So maybe change this to 0 0.01 and maybe this to 0.4. And, and we see that there's a bigger gap between uh, TDMA and the superposition coding inner bound. So, so superposition coding can do much better than TDMA. Right? But, but if you if the gap between P1 and P2 is, is much smaller, so maybe this is P1 is 0.1 and P2 equal to 0.4, then, then this gap also kind of reduces. Okay, so this gap reduces, and in particular, if I keep this maybe 0 0.3 and 0 0.4, uh, you'll see almost no gap between TDMA and the superposition coding in above. All right, so, so when P1 is something which is reasonably small, and P2 is, is much larger, so if one, when, one, uh, when user 1 sees a much better channel than user 2, uh, you'll get a much bigger gap between uh, superposition code and uh, TDMA. All right. Uh, so, any questions so far? So, this is one specific channel where uh, Superposition coding beats TDMA. And in fact, superposition code achieves the entire capacity region for this particular channel. Right. So, so we'll, we'll now go ahead and derive the superposition coding inner bound. Uh, I make some more comments regarding superposition coding. Uh, and then uh, and then later on we'll see what kind of for what kind of channel superposition coding is. Uh, is optimal. So, so maybe we'll see uh, an uh, an outer bound, a converse for the the binary symmetric broadcast channel, and then for general channels, and and we'll see that the two bounds meet for certain channels, but for general channels, the bounds don't meet. Uh, in fact, not just that. For many other channels, superposition coding is not optimal. You, there is a better coding scheme where uh, which which achieves better rates than superposition coding. So, can so let's go back. I'll stop presenting this. A any questions regarding uh, this? 
sir good uh, sorry gris go ahead and then i will ask sir sir i do have a question like yes. sir uh, in in uh, multi user systems like when we are using time sharing we have seen a capacity is when uh, like uh, uh, r1 like what are maybe the pentagon shape that we have seen sir isn't it mandatory to i mean like is there any is there any kind of I am sorry your 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 voice is not coming through properly uh, i can only hear parts of it uh, sir uh, like i am audible now sir uh, it's better so maybe if you can keep the mic close to your mouth or something maybe it will be better sir i now now is it audible sir yes it's better now so so what i was asking is that basically in whenever we are uh, like in earlier cases like water we have seen like one is time sharing in which okay. the capacity region whenever we have defined it it is in a kind of a pentagon kind of structure uh well the the, the uh, well that depends again so uh, for multiple access channels so in general it's not pentagonal right some convex region uh, for a particular distribution you you generally get a pentagon but then once you vary over distributions and take convex combinations and do time sharing it will be some convex region but but anyway go through go go ahead uh, no sir then 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 the question itself is uh, kills her because i was just thinking like uh, like like region should be in such a way where uh -huh. it will be like it should be suiting to the ideal kind of thing so now now it is clear sir now it's clear not a yeah so in general it's not a pentagonal region it will be this this sort of curved shape It's a it's a convex combination of many or infinitely many pentagons, so you get some curved region. So recall, if you go back to maybe the I don't know maybe uh, the last maybe two or three classes ago, when I when I did a similar numerical example for a multiple access channel, uh, we saw that again the curve the, the, that the actual capacity region is not a pentagon, but but in fact is is some curved region. It's some convex region. bounded by the x axis y axis and uh, some some curve like this yes sir okay. uh, so so except for very specific channels so one example is is the gaussian channel uh, on, on except for those channels the the capacity region is is always some complicated convex curve Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions? So Ritesh, you had a question. Yeah, uh, sir. In superposition, we have varying the varying the probability p one and p two in respect of the user one is seeing better as compared to user two. So uh, this, sure. so this bound like uh, we have a TDM. In this case, we have a lower like red curve. This is a okay. TDM curve for TDM. So in superposition, suppose both is seeing same. Like uh, no favor in user one or user two, then this okay. bound will be going below. It will be up to the uh, TDM. Okay. okay, so let's 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 explain that. Well, essentially, both will be the same. Right. Uh, so essentially, you will get. Okay, so let's very let's keep P one to be point four and P two to be point four. so both curves will be identical essentially oh okay all right and that is yeah it's it, it's again because you, you can't really do anything much better than tdma because uh, one user is not seeing really anything much better than the other user so if user 1 can decode both then user 2 can also decode both messages so it's only when one of the users is seeing a, a superior channel to the other user that superposition code will really beat tdma so it's might as well just do tdma so, so sir, we uh, can see superposition coding as similar very similar to the tdm in this case exactly in this case when when the channels are identical okay sir Uh, okay kirish you wanted to ask something uh, sir uh, what i was asking is uh -huh. like uh, 
sir you have I mean, like generally commented upon like tdma would be the better performing type of thing right sir no 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 tdma is generally the worst of all okay sir so, right? so tdma is the simplest but but in terms of the achievable rate, but, but in terms of the rates that it achieves tdma performs the worst so so that is why superposition coding in general so superposition coding will give you will do at least as well as tdma in all cases but but for channels where one channel is superior to the other tdma will sorry superposition coding will beat tdma and for for more general channels uh there will be better schemes which beats even superposition coding and of course it obviously beats tdma right sir uh, like if you speak about any kind of such general channels like apart from this i have read one or two uh mm -hmm. one it, i don't say whether it is the exact channel kind of channel kind of thing but there is something called netted slot uh, which i have heard in one of the operational data link platform uh, so okay. uh, so i mean like i mean uh, it was commented like that netted slotted is a bit better than uh, it is uh, worse than tdm okay so like if you have to compare like how are there any parameters that we can compare among these things sir okay i'm, I'm not the capacity sure. I, apart, i'm i'm not sure what you mean by netted slotted i don't know what that particular scheme is well um, at least among the the schemes that that we will consider tdma is is, is kind of the simplest uh and and that in general so you can always do better than tdma uh no again when i say that you can do better than tdma in terms of the rates that you can achieve there there are rate points which tdma cannot achieve but there are rate points that for example superposition coding or or something else which we call marton scheme uh, can so those schemes can achieve rate pairs which tdma cannot achieve it's impossible for tdma to achieve now uh, of course there, there are depending on the actual uh considerations when uh, the, uh, when you are when you are trying to implement things on the ground uh, there may be other requirements as well and you may want to do something maybe worse than tdma but more often than not tdma works well uh, but but of course all of this comes with certain assumptions and one assumption is that there is perfect synchronization so you know when so everything is decided beforehand how many bits you want to transmit to user 1 how many bits are that need to be transmitted to user 2 and so on and exactly when uh, they get their particular messages so there is some kind of synchronization happening in the background and and under those assumptions all of these rate pairs and everything is valid now in practice for multiple access or even broadcast channels when you're using a common resource for multiple users those aspects also need to be taken uh, into consideration and and those again so 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 those are generally our networks where uh, where either you don't have a dedicated control channel uh, or you have multiple users who can join and then leave and so on and and some users are not active uh, always but sometimes can be active and in those cases there are other multiple access techniques that you can use you have aloha and then you have you have, you have all of these uh, techniques which which are used so so here we are assuming again the assumption will be that uh, everything is synchronized you want to talk to exactly two or k users and and you have a message intended for each of those users and it is fixed and everyone knows that before right but but of course in the, there are many networks where things are a lot more complicated than that uh, sometimes you have packets intended for some users whereas you won't have packets at all intended for other users and you have if you have a large number of users then then control channels themselves can can lead to a much bigger overhead and that is why you don't have dedicated synchronization techniques and and then you use these contention based methods or aloha or whatever uh and and those can sometimes do better than tdma 
uh, but but all of this depends on the kind of traffic that you have uh, here the assumption is that the traffic is uniform at all to transmit these many bits of information but but for example over the internet inter the traffic is not continuous it's bursty sometimes you have packets intended sometimes users can remain silent right so most of the time users are silent but times you have large volumes of data being exchanged so for those kinds of techniques like like a fixed synchronization scheme may not work well um, and you need to resort to other uh, techniques right Thanks. Okay, good. Uh, any other questions? Okay, so let me go back to my handwritten notes. Okay. So this was, I mean, I, I didn't really prove the superposition in coding in a bound for uh, the binary symmetric broadcast channel. Uh, but but I just claim that these rates are achievable, and it's kind of intuitive as to why this is achievable. But now let's see the formal superposition code for for general uh, discrete memoryless broadcast channels, and uh, and derive the rate that is achievable. Okay, so for let's look at a general discrete memoryless broadcast channel where you have you have the following scenario: you have X, this is passed through. Channels P Y one given X. Y one and X is passed through P Y two given X. To get the observation of the second user Y two. Right, so generally all of these are over N channel users. Okay, and uh, so so this is the setup, and the claim is that R one comma R two any rate pair is achievable if we can find a joint distribution P X comma U over some finite alphabet U such that R one is less than the mutual information between X and Y one given U, R two is less than the mutual information between U and Y two, and R one plus R two the sum rate is less than the mutual information between X comma x and y1 okay and and the very high level interpretation of this rate region is the following so so note that this is so i of x comma y1 is achievable for user 1 right uh, so so this in some sense this is less than the capacity for user 1 alone okay and and this statement r1 plus r2 less than i of x comma i x y1 tells that user one is in fact able to decode not just his own message, but also the other user's message. Okay, so if you try to do superposition coding, then one of the users will be able to decode both messages. The other user only sees something else. It doesn't, it's not able to decode uh, uh, the, uh, it's not able to decode X itself, but is only able to decode some part of the messages, which, which is you. So u is what I call the auxiliary random variable or an auxiliary message, and uh, and 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 so user two will will in some sense be able to decode much less than the its actual capacity. So so the capacity for user two is actually i x y two, but then you are only operating you are operating at a much lower rate. It, you are actually operating at i u y two. And uh, and in fact, u x y one y two will form a Markov chain. It's, it's easy to see this. So so the mutual information between u and y two and uh, is much is can potentially be less than the mutual information between x and y two. So so user two is 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 actually operating at a much lower rate. Uh, whereas you, user one is in some sense operating close to its capacity, so it's able to decode everything. Uh, but but the but its own message is only a part of what it can decode. So so what 
what user one, the, the actual message intended for user one consists of nr1 bits, which is n times the mutual information between x and y1 given u. So in some sense, you first decode u and then uh, use the remaining part to decode your own message. This is for user one. Whereas user two cannot decode everything. It cannot decode x. It can only decode a part of it, which is u. Okay, so that is sort of the high level intuition for the superposition coding scheme. And, and this should, should tell you why the superposition coding scheme would not be optimal for general channels. Uh, in, any thoughts? Can anyone comment as to why this is maybe not very good? Probability of error? No, not the probability of error. I mean, at a very, very high level, uh, even in terms of the rates that you can achieve. Uh, so superposition code would not, so, so it, it turns out the superposition code is optimal for a certain class of channels, but, but in fact, it is not optimal for many other broadcast channels. Uh, can, can you think about why it may not be optimal? What is, can, can you, can you think about, is there some source of inefficiency in this scheme? Sir, both are not operating at their optimal level. Like a Correct. Correct. So, 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 so you're partly right. Uh, so here, where, where, so what superposition coding ensures is that user two is, is able to decode something. It's, a, it's operating at a rate i of u comma y2. But, but note that the third, the third condition, r1 plus r2 is less than i x y1 ensures that user one can decode both messages, right? Not just its own message, but also the message of user two. And, and this can be expensive. You don't, user one does not really need to decode user two's message, but it's able, but this scheme ensures that user two is able to decode it anyway. So user one is able to decode it anyway. So this is a source of inefficiency in the superposition coding scheme. And that is the reason why superposition coding is not optimal for many channels. But, but specifically for channels where one is much stronger than the other, so in particular when it is degraded, uh, uh, in particular for degraded channels, superposition coding is in fact optimal. So this works for two user schemes. So superposition coding is optimal for two user degraded broadcast channels. But for many uh, channels where, where one channel, where, where you have this order of degradation or, or you, deg you order them in terms of the power, the superposition coding is still not optimal for if you have more than three or four users. I'll make some more comments regarding that later, but, but there are only specialized conditions when superposition coding is optimal. And, and one of the reasons that superposition coding is suboptimal is that one user can decode all the messages. Right? And that is not that really necessary. Yes. Sir, if user one is able to decode both of the, the messages, like for user two and user one as well, Correct. so is it possible to some privacy concern that like, uh, if we Correct. use it? To... That's, that's potentially, that's, that's certainly a valid concern. Uh, so and and there are... That? Yes, go ahead. So, uh, so, so why you, use it? Uh, so why to use it like a privacy concern is here because it, it can decode both of the messages. Correct. That, that's certainly a concern. But of course, so right now we're not really worried about that. Uh, but so in any case, in any scheme uh, for the broadcast channel, uh, both users may be able to decode some part of each other's messages. So if you want to achieve the best possible rates, that will inevitably happen. So users may not be able to decode the full message of the other uh, user, uh, but, but they certainly will be able to at least decode a part of the message, right? Which, which is unavoidable. And, and the only way to, uh, to ensure that they cannot decode the other message is to use something else in addition. Maybe 
the messages are first encrypted and then channel coded and then transmitted which is true in practice if if there are communications yes. that you need to secure then you will then you encrypt it first and then transmit it uh, yes and in such case even though you, so, so so in that scenario all this ensures is that uh, the users are able to decode the encrypted message and and of course they won't be able to decrypt the other users message if they maybe they don't have the the necessary private keys or whatever right uh, so so that is why we are, we are we are ignoring the whole host of other issues which which actually occur in uh, multi user scenarios and there's a large large body of work there as well there, there are issues of scheduling contention uh, fairness privacy security uh, which 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 we are not worrying about at the moment right? so some of you maybe have taken taken up final uh, paper presentations and and i guess one or two are also going to be talking about security secrecy in multi user channels and 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 those are valid problems which which need to be treated differently but for the moment all all our only goal is to achieve the best possible rates we don't care about uh, privacy or security at the moment but but in practice they are valid concerns and uh, you need to think about how to resolve those concerns okay all right so so let's see how do we achieve these particular rates Okay, so first you need to look at the code book design. So again, we'll use a random code book, right? Uh, and and the way we do it is is similar to what we did for uh, the the binary symmetric broadcast channel. So first you generate. So so note that everything is defined in terms of a joint distribution, P X U. So you fix this, fix a P X U. uh such that these conditions are satisfied so that these are satisfied all right and and in particular you will take r1 to be strictly less than this maybe r1 is equal to i x y1 u So let me write that down. Okay, so R one equal to I x y one given you minus epsilon R two is equal to I u y two minus epsilon. And R one plus R two, uh, whatever is less than or equal to I of x y one minus epsilon. Okay, so I'll I'll pick R one and R two which satisfy these, and and a P x x u which 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 gives me one set of values of these mutual informations. Okay, so this is you fix this, and then you generate a random code book as follows. okay so you first you generate uh, 2 to the nr sorry 2 to the nr2 many cloud centers okay so for each message you generate a cloud center uh, according to iid pu okay so let me call them un of 1 un of 2 so for the first message for user 2 this is the cloud center 
for the second message of user two, this is the cloud center, and so on. You what do you know this capital U? Up to U two to the n r two. Sorry, U n of two to the n r two. Right, so I generate these many cloud centers, and for each cloud center, you generate two to the n r one many code words. So for each cloud center, uh, let's say i, so i is can vary between one and two to the n r two. You generate two to the n r one satellite code words. Okay, so so let's say x n of i comma one x n of i comma two up to x n of i comma two to the n r one. Okay, and each x i of so let's call this. Xp of i comma j, the, so all of these components of each of these x x of i comma j are chosen independently, independently, and are drawn according to p x given u of whatever given u. Of J. so the teeth component of of the jth uh, cloud center. Right? Sorry, uh, be the teeth component of the ith cloud center. Right, so. So U N of I is the cloud center, and correspond. This is the cloud center. So for the ith cloud center, you are generating two to the n r one many satellite code words, and each of them are distributed according to P X given U of of X given U T of I. So this is the teeth component of the ith cloud center. So you generate this in this particular manner. You generate all the code words, and uh, to transmit, so to send messages m1 comma m2. If these are the messages that 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 are actually need, that actually need to be communicated, then the transmitter simply transmits. Xn of m1 comma m2. Okay, so so m1 and m2 are actually a sequence of bits, but then right now I'm just identifying them with with the corresponding integers, the the integer representation of that particular uh, the the decimal representation of the binary string, and and so so for the m1 comma m2 message, you transmit the m1 comma m2 code. Okay, so this is the the construction. Okay, and uh, for the BSC, this this would have been for the B for the binary symmetric broadcast channel. Uh, we would have chosen PU to be Bernoulli half. Right, so you choose so you choose two to the nr two cloud centers uniformly at random. And for each cloud center, you would have generated uh, p x given u uh, would have been 
whatever uh, Bernoulli alpha XOR U okay so so you flip it if it's uh, uh, so it's as though you're passing U through a BSC alpha right so this would have been this is for the binary symmetric broadcast channel so that is how we would have chosen these particular distributions Okay, but in general, you have some p x comma u for Gaussian channel. These these again will be Gaussian, all right. And uh, and and basically, you ensure that uh, that that you that you satisfy the rates according to those constraints, and then these distributions are chosen appropriately. Okay, so that this is how you generate the code book. The code book consists of two to the nr1 times 2 to the nr2 total number of code words and for each message pair you'll 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 pick one code word which is one particular satellite code word and then transmit it across the channel okay so so is this clear Yes, sir. All right. So, so how does decoding work? Uh, so, decoder. So, the decoder works as follows. User, so, you have two decoders. So, user two does the following. Uh, find. A un of i belonging to the code book for maybe let's call it the second code book such that un of i comma y n the received sequence are in the jointly typical set so p epsilon n of p u y u y two and if not uh, if not if there if there is a if find so you try to look for a unique u n which is jointly typical with respect to y two of n so if there is more than one u n which is jointly typical with respect to y n or if there is no such un, you declare m hat m2 hat to be equal to 1. OK? So if there is 1, then you declare your estimate to be equal to i. Similarly, user one finds the, the satellite code word, the unique satellite code word, xn of i comma j in the code book, in the, set, in the satellite code book, such that xn of i comma j and y1n are jointly typical. Right. If 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 you can find multiple code words which are jointly typical, or if there are no code words, then you declare M one had to be equal to one. Uh, if you can find it, then you declare m1 hat to be equal to j. Right? So this is the jth satellite code word in the ith cloud. Right? So this is how uh, 
the user how decoding works correct and uh, and and everything succeeds if if so so there's no error if if both of these succeed if there you can find unique uh, messages and unique code words unique satellite code words and unique cloud centers which are jointly typical with respect to y n if you cannot find unique uh, cloud uh, cloud centers or satellite code words uh, as it, as it may be uh, with which are jointly typical with respect to the received y n then uh, decoding fails right and in the next class we'll analyze the probability that that decoding fails again these are very standard applications of uh, the union bound and then the basic properties of joint typicality and the uh, the packing lemma so we'll once again use that packing lemma to show that the probability of error actually decays exponentially with n as long as the rates satisfy these constraints in fact it's a very easy exercise uh, so so as long as this condition is satisfied user user 1 can decode with vanishingly small probability of error and and once again if if r2 is is less than the mutual information between u and y2 then then once again the the probability of error is vanishing with it okay so we'll we'll continue the discussion in the next class but if there are any questions now then i can address them here Okay, so if there are no further questions, then let's stop at this point. Uh, uh, we'll continue on uh, Wednesday. Thank you, sir. Thank, Thank you. you.